What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna get into frequency separation, which is a photo editing technique that's mostly used in high-end portrait retouching and product photography and stuff like that that's really detailed. But I wanted to show you guys a few ways that I found you can actually use it in real estate and architectural photography and interior sometimes. It's a super handy technique to know how to do. You can get a photo looking from this to this and it really doesn't take that long. So thanks for joining. Let's get into the video. So I wanted to say real quick, uh, so you guys don't get any wrong ideas to clear the air. Uh, I'm not making this video to support like false advertising or like totally manipulating some house pictures or product pictures to where when someone goes and sees it in person, it's just completely different. Um, this is really just a technique that you should use sparingly. And if there's like a little bit of patchy grass cause the season's changing, or maybe if you're doing like a portfolio shoot for a home builder or an architect where the exact specifics don't really matter. You're just trying to create like pretty portfolio images. I think it's totally fine to adjust stuff to where it makes the image a little bit better. So anyways, let's open up Photoshop and I'm going to show you guys how easy this technique really is. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up this action in a second, but look how easy it is once you have it set up to fix the colors and fix the textures in your grass and in your photo in general. All we're going to be using is our clone stamp to copy over textures or colors, or you can just use a normal brush with the eyedropper color tool at a less opaque setting if you're trying to even out the tones. And that's it. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up this action to where you can do this in just a few clicks. Click create a new action, and we're gonna call this frequency separation. Click record, and it'll just record everything we're about to do so that whenever you push this later, it'll just automatically do it. So make sure your photo is set as your background. So it needs to say background on the layer. Now you need to duplicate the background layer twice from that layer. And for the bottom layer, we're going to make that into our color blending layer. So for that layer, all you need to do is go up to filter and we're going to add a Gaussian blur to that layer and set it to where on the preview, you can't see any details really. It just looks like some blobs of color. Okay, now we're going to select the top layer and we're going to go up to image, apply image, Enter your bottom layer, set the blending mode to subtract, set your scale to two and 128 for offset, and then change the top layer blend mode to linear light. And this is what will happen. Now that we've done everything, you can see that this layer just has the colors on it. And then this layer just has textures, uh, very easily editable. So now we're just going to go back to the record, area of the actions and click stop. So now anytime in the future, if you want to redo this, you just have to go click your background layer and then go to window actions and click your frequency separation one and then click play and it'll just do all that stuff for you. Really cool. I like to edit my textures first. I feel like it's a little bit easier to see things once you fix that. And all you have to do is use your clone stamp to copy over textures from good areas into bad areas. The only thing you need to be careful about is that they look natural in your new setting. So if it's like closer to the camera or further away from the camera, uh, just be cautious of that. If you're fixing like grass, you don't want like huge grass really far away or really tiny grass really close. So just make sure that it actually makes sense like logically when you're looking at it. So we're just going to fix any of these spots that really stand out. And then after that, we're going to go in and adjust the colors to where they're a little bit more even, a little bit more flattering and just 
a little bit simplified to where the emphasis can really be on what you're actually selling, which is the house. A lot of times it looks weird just depending on the angle the sun is or which angle you're taking the picture from. So for example, this ground shot, the grass all looks totally fine. But on the drone shot, maybe they cut it a little bit too short, the grass, or maybe the sun's hitting it at a weird angle. So the grass just ends up looking a little bit like choppy kind of bad that's just how perspective is but it can be really distracting from like the house the pool and stuff like that so I think it's helpful to fix it a little bit so now we're gonna go in and we're just gonna use our clone stamp again to copy over colors from one spot to another we'll just pick like an ideal spot where it's really green the color you want it and copy it over the brown area or if it's like a weird colored area for these browner areas, you really have to change your brush settings a little bit, just depending on what you need. So almost like we're doing makeup on this grass, uh, we're gonna go in and fix all the tones to where they're a little bit more even and consistent. And if it's like way off, or if you need to make it a little bit darker, you can actually go in and use your brush. And we're gonna add in a little bit of like shading, kind of contouring it to where it looks really good. So once you pick your colors, you just wanna go over and lightly brush over the areas that are uneven or a little bit brighter, a little bit darker to where it evens out a little bit. Okay, you really don't wanna to go too overboard with this though. So here's a few more examples of where this can be handy. So you've got some interiors, like if you have a weird colored light bulb or Maybe you have like a really, really orange ceiling or like green reflecting onto a ceiling and you wanna just copy over some of those ceiling tones. You can fix textures, like if furniture's messed up or something that's not part of the house. Uh, it's just super handy to know this for any type of photography, honestly. I don't use it that often, but whenever you need it, uh, it's super, super handy to be able to just do a couple clicks and then suddenly it's, magic like it just looks really good anyways that's it for this one let me know what questions you guys have in the comments i know this is a little bit of a weird technique in this industry uh not many people talk about it but anybody i've showed this to it's been really helpful and so i wanted to share with you guys so if you guys like this video make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content and hit the bell to make sure you get notified whenever I post stuff, because otherwise you might miss it. And don't forget the action will be linked in the description of the video, along with like camera gear and stuff like that. If you need recommendations for anything, let me know. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate y'all's support and look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.